it's Nell, and today I'm going to be talking air plant care in a dry climate, which could be your home. So stick around for that. So if you like videos about gardening both indoors and outdoors, be sure and hit subscribe because I would love to have you come back for more. So prior to living here in Tucson, I lived in Santa Barbara, California, where I grew air plants indoors and outdoors, mainly outdoors. They did great. The climate there is just mm, for it. So it was much, much easier. But now that I live in the Sonoran Desert, it's a different story. Now that I live in the desert, I grow my air plants indoors. Not only is it air dry outdoors, but it's dry indoors too. And your home could be dry too because they are notorious for that. Things like air conditioning dries out the air as does some forms of heating and fireplaces. And because I wanna keep this video on the relatively shorter side, more details will be in the blog post along with things that air plants dislike and things they like. And I'm also going to give you the names of some of my air plants in the blog post also. So first up is the type of air plant. Some are more adapted and grow in drier climates than other air plants. They are the xeric one. Zero means dry, like zero scaping. Like for instance, this large one over here is a xerographica. So that's a good one for a dry climate. This is a xerographica cross here. And the ones that have a little bit of fuzz on their leaves and are a little bit more silvery are better equipped to handle the dry air. So something like these which have really, really fine foliage are not that good for this dry climate. Now, if you soak them every day or you miss them every day, it would be a different story, but I have so many plants inside and outside, I don't have time for that. And actually this one has almost dried up already. These, much better. Size, I think being larger helps here in a dry climate. This is the con color, and this is the fasciculata. Uh, fasci yeah, fasciculata. Um, both of these are larger along with the xerographica. These also have those nice tough leaves, and the tough leaves are are what help also and it has a little bit of fuzz of that fuzz um, on the leaf too but these these two along with the xerographica are doing great growing anywhere air plants need bright natural light they are not low light plants at all um, mine are under a skylight and I probably have them at the most about four feet away from a window, so they get lots of nice, bright, natural light. Now, that being said, these um, silvery gray ones can take more light and actually do better in a little more light, whereas something with a dark green leaf, ooh, like this bulbous one here, I have it in this fun little thing, uh, this darker green one here can take a little bit lower light but it's not low light just remember just because they don't grow in soil doesn't mean they, they don't need light i have this larger bin to soak my air plants in because i have three a larger air plants so i soak the uh i soak two of them for about anywhere from four to twelve hours depending on how the humidity is the zero graphica i don't soak for as long i soak it for an hour to three hours or so, um, and then these small ones, I soak for about half an hour to an hour. So what's really important to know is that you need to shake the water off after you soak your air plants. You don't want 
any water to sit on them for a great amount of time. And also too, I try to soak them upside down if I can, because it's the leaves that collect the moisture and not the roots. The roots are merely a way for them to um, attach to other plants because that's how they grow in nature. They don't grow on the ground. They, they grow up in the air. Actually, I've seen pictures of them growing on phone poles way up. <laughs> so I just kind of swirl it around after I'm done and just kind of shake the water off. And these smaller ones, I will mist two or three times a week in between the soakings just because I think they appreciate it. And while we're talking about the roots, this doesn't really have anything to do with a dry climate, but you can uh, cut off the roots of the plants if they bother you, or you can leave them on because they're dead anyway. As I said, they're just for attaching. So if you want to cut them off, don't cut them off way up here. Cut them off about here. Oops. Oh, I should have had a pair of scissors. There. There, and that looks better. I, I'll also go through and I'll cut off those too. I would cut that off right about there, not up here. On to location. All but one of mine are in the kitchen. This tray is next to the sink. The Zero Graphica is on open shelves above the sink, and another one hangs off of a Hoya in the kitchen. I only have one in the dining room uh, because the kitchen is where the water runs the most in my home. Um, if you have a lot of showers going on and a lot of humidity going on in your bathroom and you have some nice natural light in there, that would be a good place too. And speaking of location, you want to keep them away from any air conditioning or heating vents. You want to keep them out of any cold or hot drafts. Water quality. There is a little bit of a differing of opinion about this. Some people say tap water is okay, um, just as long as it doesn't have too much chlorine or too many minerals in it. Some say filtered, some say spring water. I really can't say because I've always used filtered water. I had a reverse osmosis system in my Santa Barbara home and now I have a uh, in-kitchen faucet filtration system here in Tucson. But you know what? Rainwater is really, really good and that's what they love. And it doesn't rain very often here in Tucson, but when it does, I put my air plants outside to enjoy some, some water falling from the sky, just as long as the temperatures aren't too cold. And air circulation. Air circulation is important to air plants, no matter what climate they are growing in. But I have them in areas where they are gonna get the air circulating around them. I open up my windows when the weather is good so they get the air coming in and out. It just kind of drives me crazy when I see those air plants in those closed in glass globes because they're not getting air circulation. It's okay if you're giving them as a gift, you just don't keep them in an enclosed area for too long. So I usually don't go for these Chotsky kind of things, but I thought this little air plant holder was cute and has smaller air plants in it. We'll see how they do over the long haul, but this funky Anna, they're usually pretty hardy, so it should um, do okay. And there's something similar in my air plant shop on my Amazon shop page, which is linked down below. So a couple signs that an air plant isn't getting enough moisture is that the leaves just feel dry. They could look really shriveled. Uh, the tips could be brown. There could be, see all that brown at, uh, at the base there. This one definitely is very dry because it feels dry. Oops, to the touch. Let's see, is that focusing in better? So those are 
couple signs also too you can see in the core there. It's brown. So this big old dead leaf here is not a sign of a dry air plant. It just happens like all plants. They occasionally lose a lower leaf and you can just take it off. Voila! Nice new fresh leaves under there. And I have a pair of scissors and I'm going to cut off the roots of this one and see if it goes any better. Oh yes, much, much, much better. Oops, oops, I spoke too soon. There we go, there we go, there. La la, oops, <laughs> there you go. I just think they look better with those roots cut off. A quick wrap up for you. Growing air plants in a drier climate isn't that much different than growing them in a more humid climate, except for a few things. First of all, they're gonna need water slash moisture more often, whether that comes in this form of either soaking and or misting. Number two is some species are, are better suited to drier climates than other ones are. Number three, those with silvery leaves, thicker leaves, a, li a little bit of fuzz, on their leaves can better handle the dryness. And number four is, I think size does matter here because the larger ones I found don't need soaking quite as often as the smaller ones do. So air plants aren't impossible to grow in a dry climate, like here in Tucson, where I think the humidity day was 28%. Oftentimes it's like 19% were dry. It just takes a little more work, but I think they are worth it. So feeding and the air plant dislikes and likes I'm going to cover in the blog post, but I do wanna tell you that my next air plant video and post coming up is going to be on easy ways to hang air plants now mid-November, I may not get that out till January, but it'll be coming up and I'll show you just a couple of things. But there's probably going to be a, about 10 ways to hang them. So stay tuned for that if you are into displaying your air plants. And yes, this is Italian parsley. It's, it's nice to have it growing in the wintertime right outside your kitchen. A little snip snip. All right, now back to the air plants. I hope you have found this video to be helpful. I love air plants and I think you should get one or two, try them out and see. And I have a lot more videos coming your way and a lot in the archive, so be sure and come back for more. I thank you for all your likes and your subscribes. I really appreciate them. Now let's get out in the garden or in the case of this video, into our indoor gardens and make our worlds a more beautiful place. As always, I thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.